Boom. What's up, fam? Anthony Dream Johnson here today, founder of 21 Convention, 22 Convention, CEO of the Redman Group, founder of 21 Studios, 21 University, and president of the fucking manosphere, some way some men put it, or males, beta males, should we say, as they call it. These idiots who try to hate on me and shit. Bunch of losers. Anyway, today we have episode 145 of the Redman Group. Amazing show. Got in store for you. Two guests on today returning to the show, including John Anthony, Coach John Anthony from John Anthony Lifestyles on YouTube. And also Alex from Playing With Fire. His channel is blown up big. He just cracked uh, 60,000 subscribers, I think, like a week or two ago. So fucking kicking ass. Before we get into the show, bring the guests on. We do have a quick uh, commercial sponsor here from my other company, the 21 Convention and 21 Studios. And that's the uh, tickets are on sale, early, early bird tickets. They are all buy one, get one free for BOGO. And uh, we got three events going on at the same time. So 21 Summit is like an umbrella convention going on for three different conferences at the same time. One for fathers, one for men, and one for the women. Women. And each one's a bit different, well, substantially different. Unique focus, speaking lineups, content, all kinds of cool stuff. Tickets are on sale at the 21convention.org. That's .org. And again, all tickets are buy one, get one free. VIP includes five-night hotel, hotel stay. This is the Patriarch Convention, a.k.a. the 21 Convention Third Patriarch Edition. Third year in a row, we're doing that one for fathers. We are rebuilding the patriarchy one father at a time. Elliot Hulse is exclusive to that event uh, as far as the men's events go. Michael Foster, pastor, is the chief patriarch of the event, the uh, ceremonial leader of it. This is the women's event. I'll be speaking there. And Professor Janice Fimengo, fucking savage lady, amazing lady, who uh, loves beating up on feminism in very intelligent ways. And of course, the main event with big YouTuber here, Richard Grannon, he's got about 300,000 subs, huge on psychology, trauma, healing from trauma as a man. And Jack Donovan, author of The Way of Men and actually many other books beyond that, including his new book, uh, Fire in the Dark. There's about 15 to 20 speakers per convention, so they're all fucking huge. They're all four days long, and it's going to be an amazing time. Last year was the first time we did three at the same time for a 21 Summit, and it's fucking super dope. Very amazing, positive experience. Come on out, have a good time. And that's October 21st to 24th, uh, 2021, later this year. It's our 15-year anniversary, too. It's fucking savage. Anyway, enough selling you guys shit. Uh, not all of you will buy it. That's okay. Subscribe on YouTube. Hit like. Appreciate your support there. Without further ado, please and welcome to the show, Alex from Playing With Fire, Coach John Anthony from PlatinumDatingSystem.com. What's up, boys? <laughs> awesome. Man. Thanks for having us on, man. Uh -huh. I'm from PlatinumDatingSystem.com now. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, it's. I know you have it there anyway, so I figured it'd be good, right? That's where you sell it. Let, let me change my name so people know who I am, too. Yeah. Uh, your website is your name. Your parents named you a website. <laughs> he looks like a platinum dating system dot com type of kid. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know, they, these guys have both been on the show before. Uh, Alex from Playing with Fire is a big guy for like online dating and stuff. And John Anthony is pretty savage in that he has like probably the highest lay count in the entire manosphere. Fourteen hundred lays or something like that. Uh, Thirteen seventy eight. Yeah. Uh, loser, not even fourteen hundred. <laughs> so, so you guys know that number is not only huge. Like the average American male, uh, the median lay count for a lifetime is like seven by comparison. Seven. So fourteen hundred or thirteen seventy eight is astronomically high, and a lot of people don't like that, especially like trad cons and shit. But I think it's impressive. It's a real, the uh, perseverance and dedication and hard work to push push through for years and do that. That's like Olympic level shit for pickup, dude. Straight up. All, all you need is a hyperanalytical mind and lots of verbal abuse of the child. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, today I just want to kind of wrap with you guys. We had a really good show last time. The last one we did together was probably like two months ago. The three of us kind of, yeah. kind of, you know, went around and talked shit on people, made fun of people, talked game, you know, talked talk, talk <laughs> shop. I also got to meet, I meet Alex um, back at, down in Miami recently when I interviewed Cobra Tate. We got to have cigars and shit one night. Yeah, good times. And, yeah, it was cool, man. Good meeting up, you know, face to face kind of shit, you know. But both of you, can you talk to me about what's been going on in your channels since uh, we last spoke? I mean, you both are having good growth. John, you're at like 23, 24,000 subs. And, uh, Alex, you cracked 60,000 recently, right? I was correct yeah, on that. 60K, next up, 100K. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's been, uh, I've been more diligent with the videos. So I'm putting out videos almost every other day now. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to cover a wide variety of topics. Uh, going after we did a recent video about how Vladimir Putin uses frame control. Very interesting video. We got what another the first one. Part you said what is how the part Putin, you said? Putin uses frame control. Prudent Putin, the president of Russia. Oh, Putin. oh, president. Oh, Vladimir Putin. Okay, I'm like, what the fuck yeah. is Putin? What? Yeah, cool. Yeah, frame control is insane. 
He's uh, yeah. very good at directing the conversation and manipulating people. Trump, yeah, Trump as well. Yeah, a lot of a Trump lot as of well. Interesting... That's yeah, going to yeah. be the next video, actually, probably. Yeah. Um, so we're doing a lot of interesting content like that, trying to grow the channel. But unfortunately, people don't really want to see. Like, I just had a. Uh, I was telling you guys in the group chat. I had a doctor on um, yesterday. He's uh, one of the best, in my opinion, uh, hormone doctors in the world. I think uh, he has a YouTube channel with over thirty thousand subscribers. Highly in demand guy. Very intelligent. Very knowledgeable in men's health and just health in general. Uh, you know, went to school for like over ten years. I got thirty live viewers <laughs> when I had him on. I have on some big titty porn star. I have over two hundred. Yeah, dude. Yeah, the same with me. I'll put out like it, like something that gives away almost like the entire game, and it'll, it'll get like just a couple thousand views. And then I like make fun of like some idiot, and yeah. it'll get just tens of thousands. Dude, all, all these dudes, especially the beta male police, I call them the BMP, <laughs> the beta male police. They're like, oh, it's just so much drama. It's feminine drama. It's like, bro, that's all you fucking tune into. You're addicted to it. That's why they bitch about it. You know, all this fucking bullshit. They love it. You know, everyone's like that, right? Oh, all this drama on TV and the news. It's like, motherfucker, like that. You're like, it's like crack for you. You're the people who bitch about it the most are the ones who are addicted to it the most, you know? I hate that. Yeah. Crap. My channel was growing like, you know, pretty, pretty solidly since January when I was just like, you know, going to a bunch of exposed videos, roast videos, et cetera, yep. uh, response videos. And then I did like a month of pure value content to kind of like reset a benchmark and like the growth yeah. like choked up. <laughs> yeah. It's not, the content's good, but like people, it just doesn't like, people want to see like the fucking carnage and the drama and the, and the negative shit. I'll send you guys too if I haven't sent you this tag thing I used to help on YouTube and uh, it helped a rapid lot. Tag. Using, yeah, rapid tags, yeah. yeah. That helped a lot. I started using it in like November, December, and it's helped a lot since then. It's still ups and downs, man. YouTube's fucking retarded a lot of the time. They throttle shit, all kinds of algorithm shit. It's fucking retarded. Yeah, like, what, what, what hurts me is all my videos are demonetized, like almost like yeah. pretty much almost 100%. So yeah. any new video, like it just automatically gets demonetized. I've shown videos where I've scrolled through every video on my channel. It, yeah. Almost every single one's demonetized, so that jokes off for the show too. It's because I swear a lot and talk about inappropriate yeah. shit, but whatever. At this point, they probably automatically demonetize you, so it doesn't yeah. even matter. You, you probably make a video where you don't curse; you just talk about Jesus, and you'll still get demonetized. <laughs> yeah, Lord is the way, boys. <laughs> well, I have two yeah. channels. This is streaming on two channels right now. Twenty One Studios, right, the big one, and the Redman Group, the smaller one, which is like fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand subs. I can upload the same video. To both channels upload not even live stream right upload the same exact video 20 in studios will be green it'll get a green money sign that's fine red man group yellow instant yellow every time mm. I'm like this is this is yeah. fucking bullshit bro like they're yeah. they're treating the small channel like a little piece of shit and the big channel i think big channels get preferential treatment even if yeah, you're not like in the hundred percent yeah it's, yeah. Fucking it's the same thing I mean, with instagram it's the same thing with instagram if you have over a million followers you have different standards that's why like yeah. certain chicks uh can show like kim kardashian can show her ass and shit, right versus yeah. a porn star who has a hundred thousand followers she yep. gets insta banned yeah it's really retarded man like it's it is what it is i just keep fucking going and fighting and chugging along whatever the fuck happens i curse a lot too like yeah anthony john anthony anthony johnson yeah. right? But uh, <laughs> I love it. I just, you know, people wonder sometimes, like, can you curse on YouTube? I'm like, I don't fucking care. I never get any strikes either. Like, they've never given me a single strike. Yeah, I've, I've never had a strike either. Yeah, I've had I've had a whole bunch. <laughs> I've had to, yeah. I've had multiple I've had multiple instances where I've had I've been down to the two out of three strikes, and I have to like private all my controversial videos, which is a lot of them, and then yeah. wait ni ninety days and just kind of like keep it PC for ninety days. Well, that's yeah. because people people put false copyright strikes on things, which I've threatened legal action back on them, and that those different players yeah. stop doing that. Well, you're also super combative. I mean, I love conflict too, but you're just like a bulldog. You go after everyone, man. I love it. You know, I love seeing it. Bulldog it's mindset. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be 21, man. Bulldog. Yeah, he's going to be there at least on the last day, maybe two days out of the event. Yeah. I'm Are you going, Alex? I'm I'm going to be speaking there. Are you going to be? Yeah, man. We talked, we talked about this on our last live stream. We we're talking about doing a podcast before yeah. or afterwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the event's still, you know, I had it pulled up here a minute ago. Where is that shit? My chick's birthday is like during the event, so I don't know how that's going to happen. Going to work if, if she wants to celebrate her birthday in the This in is the, the main States. event, too, man. Just out night or something. But all her we friends have, uh, are like, well. we have Greek oh, gods speaking at it, obviously. We have Poseidon shit going on here. So it's pretty dope, dude. Yeah, the media is fucking snooping around, too, man. They follow the women's event. So whenever I announce shit for that, like the Guardian and like all that shit, they're fucking snooping around the emails. It's pretty funny. What are the rules for the women's event? Like uh, you said, there's no men allowed, right? Or yeah, pretty much. There's no men. It's for women, so there's no men allowed at it. I mean, 
if a chick has like a husband, you know, he can go to it. I'm obviously go. I do it. It's all men speaking at it. Number one, or almost all men. I've chicks speaking at it, not too. But now, like the women, you, if you're a chick, you can't go to 21 convention. It's not for you. Oh, uh, if if you're chaperone, like my sister can go and hang out because I'm like there. If a speaker has a wife or a, a girlfriend, that's fine. Like John John Sam has brought some Tinder chick last year. I think he's dating now, actually, or something on Tampa. She's pretty hot too. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good. That's my, that's how you know someone has game. Is like the girl is not a fat like a like fatty, you know. All these coaches with fatty girlfriends and shit like that, dude. I found, I saw you should have seen this morning. I found this patriarch dude. I fired him as a speaker because he's like a child beater. I found out. Jesus. But I I saw yeah. He didn't tell me either before he spoke, which is super fucked up. Like he went he got arrested for like criminal child abuse and then fucking disclosed this shit. He put a boot. It's on the news. He put his boot on this his kid's head and got arrested for it. Boot print on the kid's face. Went to school with boot print on his head. Right. Didn't fucking yeah. tell me that shit, but I found out his wife is like disgusting, like worse than Donovan's wife. Like if Donovan's wife's like a two or a three, this bitch is like a one. I mean, this, shit is, this shit is gross. It's the worst one I've seen. Like it's that bad. It's that fucking bad, bro. I don't know. Go ahead. That Australian article that came out that was like talking about all the different pickup artists and stuff where I, where I, where I gave like my input. She was like, do you, she didn't publish this part, but she's like, do you regret Calling these different guys girlfriends and wives like twos or threes, oh, yeah, I and I was like, and I and I was trying to give politically correct answers most of the time, but I was like, no, I don't, because yeah. like men have objective attraction circuitry, yeah, and that means nothing against the woman personally. It's not a misogynistic statement either. It's that we can all agree as men that this woman is below average. So yes, I can say yeah. that, and no, it's not offensive. The truth matters, man. The truth matters. The truth is the truth. And like, you can give guys a little bit of wiggle room, but a very small amount for personal preferences. You know, at some point you have to be like, no, this is objectively ridiculous. Like, yeah, I think you should be free to marry any kind of gross girl you want. I just think that you, if you marry a gross chick, you shouldn't be able to teach about game. That's like, that's like a caveat. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you have to retire from teaching if you're going to marry a gross girl. <laughs> especially if you're going to hide it and lie about it, which so you many can't have do. both. You can't have, you can't have both. You can either have the gross girl or you could have uh, your fucking yeah. lofty pickup coach title yeah, yeah that, that fit the the uh the ugly wives and girlfriends video i made that, that has like over yeah. 50k views now yeah, and I, right. I was looking at, i was looking at the other day it has like 1.3k likes and 1.3k dislike it's like who's disliking that so like, no, it's, like <laughs> it's like if you were to show like hey here's this famous like how to make money guru and he's actually homeless and here's all the records that he's homeless and like broke and everyone's yeah. like dislike dislike it's like the fuck out of here and it's not fair to, to expose his financial situation okay what are these guys doing? Like, you know, how, how are they experts when the girl's below average? I, I, it, it's mind boggling to me. It, to this day, I can't understand it. How is most of the industry dating below average girls? Well, let's investigate the situation because it is an unbelievably fucked up and I'm sick of it. Like, it's, it's not even, it's not even like we're, we're, we're splitting hairs. Like, oh, she's a seven, she's a seven, five, she should be a nine. She's yeah. a three. So let me say this, and you guys, I think, especially John, you've been around a long time in uh, PUA community. Alex, uh, you found it in 2012 or something? Yeah, something like that, 2012. So even since the 2000s, I noticed way back in the top layer days and the Mystery Method forums and all that shit, way back in like 06, 07, dudes would like, even in real life, you go out and wing, some, wing with some dude who's like sucked, but at least he could approach or try. And he'd be like, yeah, she's like an eight. I approached that eight over there and she blew him out. It's like, no, nah, man, that girl has a bunch of makeup on, has a push-up bra, and she's like a five or six. Like, you're fucking delusional. Oh, the inflated ratings? Yeah. The inflated ratings, yeah. It's so it's, it's been consistent for 15... I've been in this for 15 fucking years. That shit has yeah. been consistent since day one. It's in the red pill, too. It's the same fucking thing. They're delusional. Inflation. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's so true. When we when we post... When I go through the forums uh, and people say, yeah, I banged this uh, six, well, they, the joke we have is like, okay, so it was a three. Like, whatever the number the person yeah. says, it's three points lower. Yeah, I banged this eight. Okay, so she was just average yeah i made this 10 okay so she was somewhat cute yep yeah no. it's I, th I think here's my theory on it and let's see what you guys think i think that basically these chodes and these betas they have assuming they're even talking to them and ready to do anything they have like an upper ceiling like a glass ceiling like a feminist bitch about and their glass ceiling is like like the best they could do and their best game on the best day of the year if they were fucking hammered and like super confident or something right is like a seven or an eight. That's the absolute pinnacle of what they could bang in, in life, right? Absolute fucking pinnacle. So that I think is what caps it. And that's why to them, like a, like a five is like a seven or an eight because their, their fucking system is not zero to 10. It's like zero to like six or seven. And like a seven, if the dude's like a three or four and he has shit game, then him banging like a six or seven would be like absolutely fucking, you know, uh, 
enlightenment. Like he has reached the pinnacle of human life, banging a, a relatively average looking girl. So I think that's why they do it. It's like eights and nines and tens are not even, they don't even exist to them, right? They don't even, it's not even in the realm of possibility. Even if they're- And, and they talk shit on them. And they, and they say those girls suck. Those girls are all bitches. Those girls aren't worth dating and this and all these other stupid myths. Yeah. Where I, I'm like, I'm in the process. I've been compiling like, um, to show like more data stuff. I'm going to show like all my main girls and, and monogamous girlfriends over the past decade. Cause I've always had the standard of having them be a nine plus for over 10 years. And, then, and they have to be a bunch of qualities internally as well. It's not just pure looks, but as a yeah. standard, you have to be a nine plus to be the main rotation girl or to be a monogamous girlfriend. So yeah. literally in every, every different city that I had, like in Vegas, it was like a Serbian model in, in Portugal it was like a Brazilian stripper in, uh, in Poland, it was like a 19 year old, like former playboy Ukrainian chick. Um, like here, it's the girl I bring on my channel who's like an engineer, but like in each of the cities, it's not that hard if your game is good and you're supposed to be yeah. a guru and a master. The thing is the same guys have ugly girlfriends also have zero infield, also have zero receipts, also yep. talk in abstract Google nonsense terms. And, and you just watch five minutes of any of their technical game videos and you, you, I, a guy like myself can see immediately that they know that they're just talking out of their ass. But yep. since most of the guys don't know what they're that these guys, or most of the guys don't know real game theory anyways, and there's a lot of like bad misinformation being propagated that people don't know how to fact check these guys anyways this is the other big problem. I've even seen uh, the fraud father uh, Rollery go after Cobra Tate and bang in Co and Cobra Tate the girls he bangs. <laughs> he bangs hot tricks like straight up. Yeah. No, they're porn stars for him or whatever sometimes and sometimes not. Who cares? But he's not banging fat ugly women. I asked him to his face. I was like, do you fuck any old fat women? And he's like, no, I don't fuck any old fat women. But these yeah. days, you have you have to ask. I cannot imagine Tate fucking old fat women. No, no, of course not. Of course not. Yeah, yeah. but I decided to troll him. I love fucking yeah. women like that. But, but you know dude, there's there's so many fucking fake dating experts. You have to actually ask that question, like straight up. Like, do you fuck? Do you two? Do let me ask both of you. Do any? Do either of you fuck any old fat women? Just straight up, yes or no question. No. For for me, Alex, for me, there was there was like quality discrepancy. I think in like the first hundred. Like if we're being real, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in the first sure. hundred in the first hundred well, late count. Yeah, yeah. And it when wasn't like game, yeah, it was debatable for sure. And it wasn't it, like basically as as I got better, it the average quality went up, and there's always yeah. still like that one night where you dip a little bit, but the average quality, if you like graph it out, kind of all scientific, like it kept going up. But you know what's crazy to me? I don't know if you guys have this phenomenon. When I first meet a girl, she starts off being when there's a novelty factor, she starts yeah. off being attractive. <laughs> So she's at first she's an eight. Once I keep banging her, she goes down to a seven and then a six point five <laughs> and then a six. No, so, dude, that's a, that's a real thing. I, I've talked to a lot of advanced guys about this. My other friends that are that are in the multi hundred late count, we're we're always talking about like this phenomenon. Like you'd rather you'd rather bang like a new eight than like the, the same nine like over and over and over and over. And there's like evolutionary roots to that. I remember Bradicus was telling me about it. Like your your body just responds the most to a new partner. So yeah, new sex can be fucking dope, man. Some of the best sex in my life has been same at lays that just get wild. Like you're fucking like six hours straight, you know, like whatever the fuck's going on. I can't yeah. say everything on camera, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but the point, the point I'm trying to make is that I have to like you have to start a bit higher than whatever your I guess glass ceiling is because it's gonna go down. So if I was to marry a chick, she would have to start off as a nine or ten because eventually she's gonna go down to a seven or eight for me. So if you start with like a six, like She's going to be a three or four. After well, let's, let's be real, too. Scientifically, uh, now this is not science. This is more like manosphere stuff. I think both of you will agree that men in the manosphere for a while, we've been saying that men age like wine. So you kind of get a little better and more refined as you age. You become more masculine, you become wiser. Yep. Women age like milk. They fall apart. And physically, you, this is true. Like, I, I heard the, yeah, I heard the stats yesterday on, on my mentorship call. Some guy like had the, had the stats that he had just looked up. And women are supposed to be in their prime at 23. And men are in their prime at 38. I'm turning 38 in October. Yeah, man. Exactly. And then, and then for men also, that it's they stay like relatively like at their highest point. There's like a very slow drop off, even into like the mid 50s. Yep. So, and I, and that like carries me right into like the singularity, destroying mm -hmm. civilization, yeah. or, at least, or at least virtual sex. You know, becoming very prevalent, and paradigm shifting. Well, so it becomes it's beyond that for women though, physically, even without even getting the singularity stuff, like their, <laughs> their skin, their skin ages faster than ours. It wrinkles faster because it's thinner. It's ours is designed to actually withstand being like hit and cut and stuff and heal faster, right? Our collagen is thicker on our skin, and if you're healthy, then it fucking you don't age as yeah. fast. Basically. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's the thing. It's all the anti-aging regimens. Like me and my. Well, I, think, take I, think, yeah, I think this is all assuming the man takes care of himself, which yeah. less than twenty percent of guys do. 
True, uh, like true. most guys will go downhill as they age. It's only a small subset of men. Like if you go to the gym, you eat healthy. Yep. Uh, probably, you know, at some point you have to do hormone optimization. I just think there's no way around it. Like when you're in your 40s, at the very least, like you're going to have to do TRT to get the testosterone of like a younger guy. Not necessarily. I know Tony Bruno, a buddy of mine that you guys have seen on my channel a couple of times. His, his testosterone is still like in the 700s and he's like 58 years old. Yeah, that's unusual. My, that's, that's my uncle. Unusual. Yeah, it's, it is unusual though. For sure. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. There's there's the exceptions, of course. And my dad, I'm sure, has yeah. pretty high testosterone because he's still pretty ripped and he's 56. But I think there's like exceptions. Yeah, it is what it is. I know for me though, you guys both went to high school, obviously, right? Growing up, so did I. Yeah. Almost everybody I've known since high school, chicks and guys both, they all get like, will get fat and then maybe lose weight and then they get fat again. There's these cycles they call like a yo-yo. They go up and down. The chicks, of course, end up being single moms and shit too. They get wiped up. Or not even wife, being knocked up, not even wiped up, right? It's all it's all fucking disaster. Like they all end up being fucking losers a lot of the time. But it's the fatness that's amazing to me because like I have not been like that at all. My whole family where I get my family of origin, they're all very prone to obesity, and so am I. But I've not been fat since I was like sixteen. I like lost it and I fucking kept it off ever since. But most people don't do that. They just get even if they're, you know, doing well in life, making money or whatever, they just get fat and lose it a little bit and get fat and fatter and fatter and fatter. And that's it to me is a server. It's unnecessary. It's completely fucking ridiculous. Um, yeah. I don't know. Neither of you look like you've been fat. I don't know. No, I've never been. I've always been prone to skinniness. So I've always I've been an ectomorph. So for me, I've been very skinny at points in my life. But uh, yeah, I've, yeah, I don't think it would be possible for me to become fat even if I tried. Just yeah, in, in college, I was like 155 pounds in college at six four. Damn. And now I'm like, I, I, I vary between like 200 and 220 now, but like depending on the bulk and cutting. But I think the closest I ever was to fat was when I like did a, a dirty bulk with, uh, with Sonny Arvado in like 2019 or 20, was it 2018 or so. Have you seen some of my old videos? Because um, I was just like taking these like weight gainers and it was just like shit loads of like extra carbs. And I, I was basically like overeating and, and I was drinking like a fish and stuff too. And I just got like bloated up and stuff. But. Um, I don't want to ask you. Uh, so you're six yeah. four. That's that's really tall. Like I'm barely five ten. I say five eleven. Five eleven on the internet. Five ten in real life. It's What's that been like? One percent. Like I, I googled it in the U.S. It's one percent oh, of people are are six easy. four or higher. Easy. Yeah. Even over six foot's unusual. It's like uh, top five percent or ten percent. Like it's unusual. But anyway, yeah. I want to ask you. Like, how do you think that has affected your game and your ability to bang a lot of women? Like, obviously, it's a good thing being tall rather than short. So what are you what are your thoughts on being tall? Like, yeah, guys, guys, guys always ask me. That. Guys always ask me that, and I, and I never had good game when I before I had my growth spurt, mm -hmm. which was like end of high school. Um, but I, I've taught tons of clients that were short that I've gotten into the multi hundred lay count. So just using them as reference, like it's it's not. I'm not a coach who says the looks don't matter, the height doesn't matter, and this doesn't matter. The thing is, is it it just doesn't matter nearly as much as guys think. Like if a guy's yeah. in his forties. Yes, there'll be some girls have a problem with your age, but it's not going to be nearly as many. It's not going to be anything significant. Or if a guy is like Asian or Indian in a Western culture, maybe some girls might have an issue with that, but but tons won't, right? Or, or the height thing. So it, it's more of like the, more, the most important thing is not to let those things handicap you in your own mind because then you come in like defeating yourself before you even had a chance and it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Guys, and it comes in all shapes and sizes. Guys will go in. I've had on live programs, all oh, my hairline's receding, and they think every girl's staring at their hairline, and every every blowout negative reaction is because of the hairline. And every guy has like their own like silver bullet in their head. They're like, oh, I'm not getting results because of this, and then it, and then they're like, well, see, look, it's because I'm short, right? So, yeah. yes, some girls are gonna like care about guys being shorter, especially when they're wearing heels. But there's still tons of other hot girls. There was I just saw this chick today on Instagram. I was like a ten, with it, and she was kind of short, and the dude's like her height. You know, but he was like muscular. So if you're shorter, lift weights and you know optimize what you can in your control. Don't don't just give up because you're because you're short. And use the platform shoes too. Do you think yeah. it's more important to platform actually? Do you think it's actually important to be tall, or is it the feeling that women get from you being tall? You know what I mean? Like it's the dom. They feel like a dominance thing because you're just fucking tall automatically, right? It's not like big tits. Yeah. It's like big tits. The girl could be a fucking piece of shit, but you see big tits and you're like, oh, nice. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think it's like a feeling they get or is it like i've thought that for a while being tall as a guy is like having big tits as a girl it just is what it is you know you got lucky congratulations you know and being jacked is like a girl having a fat ass yeah something like that yeah um i don't know i i don't i don't i don't, I don't know how much i would would attribute to that it definitely helps i think guys should be playing with like a lot of the smv stuff in their in their control but like to yeah. be fair i didn't really work on my smv at all through the majority of my late count or, or very minimally 
like I was like fairly skinny through most of my leg count. And I just kind of like compensated for that by just wearing jeans, jeans and a button down. Like if I wear jeans, like I'm in like pretty good shape now, but if I wear jeans and a button down, it doesn't look a whole lot different than when I was wearing jeans and a button down before. Or I used to wear a lot of coats. Like if I was in like New York or Philadelphia or whatever, I would, and I, I found my game like would perform slightly better. I think when I had a coat on, but I, that might've been in my head. I'm not sure. But, but basically like, you know, um, I didn't start like just recently, like in the past six months, that's when I did like the Botox, eye bag fillers, hair transplant, teeth whitening. Um, you know, the hair transplants within like two, three months are like imperceptible, but this will all be back. It's permanent. Um, see, I can't wrinkle my forehead, get that done every six months. The eye bag thing will be re-upped in like a month. But like I, I got people thought I was like 27 uh, about a week ago. I usually get between like 27 and 32 or 33, but I'm going to be 38 in October. And there's other guys that are my age that look like they're like 50. They're like, yeah. you know, like they're, they're it's just, they just let themselves go. Yeah. Um, like shit. Yeah. yeah. I started TRT like uh, two years ago or so. And, and for those, like a lot of people think like, Oh, that's steroids or this and that. All it's doing is putting your, your uh, hormone levels back to where they're supposed to be back to like where they were when in your late teens, early twenties. So if you do it through an endocrinologist, and they're monitoring, you know, the levels, you're just putting things back into an optimal because we're not meant to live much past 30 biologically. So a lot, you know, the, the, yeah. the testosterone falls off a cliff, like the other hormone was a DHEA or something like that. Yeah, it's Starts complex and it's not steroids, like steroids are different than doing it through a doctor and it's a lot of shit too. A lot of it, yeah, bodybuilders it's, it's really different. Shit. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the one of the things that gets confused in the uh, pickup, red pill, manosphere, whatever, the difference yeah. between uh, yeah, testosterone, TRT, and steroids. Hey, oh, you're guy, bringing on the uh, Make Top Dictionary? Yeah, I send the link. Yeah, I think it'd be fun to shoot the shit. You guys get along, See, right? He's, on he's uh, I bash on a lot of guys. I have no issue with that guy. We we yeah. we differ in worldviews, but he's respectful. He brought me on his channel and didn't and uh, didn't attack or anything, and he was respectful. Yeah. And um and I like that he goes after a lot of these fuckers as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, you know, I don't have anything. I don't have any beef with that guy. So I, like I know I know he's catch other guys, but. I think I think he like they like snuck bulldog. I think when they brought him on the show, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did think that was pretty fucked up. But aside from that, yeah, he's alright. Yeah, they call him they call him horse face mindset or some shit. Well, what yeah. I don't understand is uh, I mean I like John a lot, bulldog, but I don't know why yeah. he stayed on that podcast. I would have dude. I know, was, I know, shit, man. I've been like, yo, fuck off, man. Dude, and he stayed was, on there for like six hours. One I time. know. He's like, like, what are you mind? doing? Like, why is he putting up with this? Dude, I don't have the patience for that. I can I can I do an hour it. or two, but that's it, man. That's like a fucking movie, like a long yeah. movie, right? Two hours, maybe two and a half. It's super long, yeah. But I like yeah, John, a lot. Did you watch the uh, the podcast I did with the Black Pill guy? Uh, no, I saw it came up. I, I'm subscribed to your channel, but I I just it's hard because there's like not enough not enough time to like fit in business and girl stuff and gym and like martial arts and all this stuff. So I don't there's not like a whole lot of extra free time. But I'm but I'm like shifting things around in my company to free up more time. Um, but yeah, I saw it pop up with Face and LMS. I know Sonny used to be a big fan of that guy. You would get a kick uh, out of that one. Yeah, we get into a big you, debate. About well, how what's, much like the, what's like the summary there? Because you said there was like a healthy debate, but what was what was like the main? Yeah, debate? I mean, well, so the black pill argument, the argument that he gave is that face, basically, face, SMV and especially mm -hmm. face, not even so much like status and body, is what determines everything. And that, for example, if you're a guy who's like a five or a six or a four, or whatever, you're basically fucked. Um, and yeah, I, so, get, I get guys and, 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 they, and they hate these arguments. I know a guy, blah, blah, blah. But I since know. I've coached, I've coached thousands of guys now over the past 10 years and I'm like a data analyzer, I kind of have it like compartmentalized. I sign up guys weekly that are like tall and jacked that, that are like, we just had a guy in Spain. He looks like a male model. He's in like terrific shape, tattoos, like perfect face. And he's been with like two girls and he was like, dude, it was total luck. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and he, he said his friends are all perplexed and it's just that he like fucks up the cold approaches. He fucks up the texting when he does happen to get past the texting to a date. He fucks that up. And it's well, not look just at this like, guy. Hey, look at this guy right here. I'm six one. It's still hard to get girls. Like yep. I believe that shit, dude. That's not a magic pill being good looking or being tall. They yep. still suck. And, and like the vast majority of my clients are like average looking or, or maybe a little above average looking. And I get lots of them on track to do 50 to hundred a year. That doesn't mean that looks don't matter. It's just that the strategy part of the equation is definitively the, the majority of the of the equation, is what I've, is what I found because I have so much data, regardless of guys' looks or I've even gotten lots of like ethnic guys or, or short guys, you know, into multi hundred lay count. It's 
it, it's not the definitive factor. That doesn't mean that they have the same uh, chances. If all things, if their game was equal, they have the same chances. No, the guy with the better looks would, would have a better shot. But guys can still get the dating life of their dreams with proper game. Unless they, you know, I had one guy, to be fair, who had like a deformed face from a car accident. And he actually was like, nobody wanted to match him on Tinder. And he's like, you told me I'd, you know, still maybe able to get results. And, you know, he was just like all upset. And I, but the, the, it's just because his face was deformed. But like, if that's extreme, that's an extreme case, you know, so. You, yeah, you got to think the extreme cases have it, like the bottom 2%. Yeah, those guys, unfortunately, for better or for worse, like they're fucked. And what, what, my advice for those guys is to make a lot of money, get yeah, status, yeah. and bang sugar babies because that's that's really what it is. But those guys <laughs> those guys are an extreme minority. Like most guys who think they fall into that category, they're really not. They're just a little overweight. They just have a bad haircut. Uh, but yeah, gonna, the formula yeah, are kind it's of a hard. Hang on. It's a I'm threshold. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to jump in here with something I think both of you appreciate. Uh, so we're talking about the inflation that these manosphere guys do, right? They all this bullshit, right? With how they view girls and rate them ridiculous, uh -huh. you know, totally delusional evaluations. The same where girls are delusional a lot of time in evaluating themselves, right? Though some some fat five, some friendly five will fuck some dude as like an eight because he's just Chad Zilla and doesn't give a fuck, and then she thinks she like deserves eights. It's like, bitch, you're not even close. But here's what I think. Uh, Oh, yeah. So here's what I think the real test of game is like if a dude is a four objectively or a five on a scale one to ten, and that's hard for us to determine because we're not gay. Like I can't I don't know. It's hard to look sometimes. You can try, but it's like you're not you, there's no you know, you're not the opposite sex and evaluating it, you know, the way yeah. women need to do that. But uh, I think that's really the test of how good his game is, is can he punch at so to speak at his own weight class or above a little bit. So yeah. if you're if a dude's a five and he can bang sixes and sevens, that's really good, man. Like you're not banging eight nines and tens. Who cares? Like you're if you're a five, you're doing really good. That means you have skill. It means you have game. It means you've worked at it. it means you've, you're putting in the effort where it counts. So that to yeah, me, I'll, I'll really, that, yeah. the dating coaches. This is where these frauds, right? These these fake dating expert losers that bang you know fuck old fat women all day long, right? That's all they do. They're they're a lot of them. When I first met the sharp mama uh, back in the day, the first thing I thought I was just like, why the fuck is he with this chick? He could he could fuck better. If I was in his body with my game, I could fuck hotter women than this dude. Why is he with this chick? It was it was confusing to me. I wasn't thinking big picture. I was too tired. I was like an hour of fucking sleep when I met them, right? But I'm like, why is he with this chick? And I didn't realize he was such a fucking loser, obviously. But that to me signals that he has no game on top of that because he can do – he's not – I mean, they make they make fun of him and saying he looks like a, a rat or something, which is pretty funny and probably true. But he could definitely bang better. And that, that just to me is why he's a fucking loser. Anyway, we got MD on too we can pull in. What's up, bro? Hey, what's up, man? How you guys doing? What's doing up, good, man. Hey, Welcome to Chicago. I, I was curious to ask you about. <clears throat> I saw. I think it was like uh, modern life dating. Uh, was, people were saying like your true identity is revealed. Is that bullshit or what is that about? They they can say whatever they want, man. I look at it this way, right? They say things so people will forget that he takes pictures of children while they aren't looking. He's a child predator, and I'm, I've already speak spoken with lawyers, law enforcement. You know. It comes to a point I was making the transition to go into a, a more wisdom type of channel and knowledge because people see that, you know, that's where I come from. And, you know, I wrote the book, The 48 Laws of Dating, and I stand by every law that's in there because it's scientific, right? Now, the dating coaches or the real social dynamics, whatever guys want to call themselves, they have to make a position. Either they're going to be the supporter of a child predator, like modern life dating, John Hogwood, or they're going to be a man. So whatever they want to do with, you know, dating and relationships, that's up to them as long as the person is over 18, you know, and this is where I draw the fucking line because I'm yeah. just tired of this shit. You know, I will light these motherfuckers asses on fire with truth. I've spoken. Yeah. I, I have an interview coming out with law enforcement specialists, FBI specialists. I mean, he put a federal employee. He doxed his own clients. So that's another thing too. Dating coaches or whatever the, what they want to do that I that that is you know agreeable or not agreeable. The line has to be drawn. You don't dox your clients. You don't take pictures of fucking children, and you don't yep. support people that take pictures of children. You call that shit out. John yep. Hogwood is a child predator, and the truth is never slander. Yep. Never slander. So well, it's beyond that, man. There's woman, be there's woman beaters and child beaters in the manosphere too, and I've been going after them lately a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be making a whole documentary on that, and I'm thank you so much for putting out that uh, that clip because I'm using that, you know, hopefully with your permission, 
Uh, Donovan Sharp, you know, uh, talking yeah. about beating women, Dirty Eddie. I mean, it has to be drawn there. You don't tell guys to beat women or you would knock her teeth out. You don't take pictures of what children. Happened what happened there? Can you guys, can you guys there's, there's, a, there's a clip of uh, of him just ranting about how he would, like, beat a girl. Oh, yeah. We should watch it. You guys want to watch it? Let's pull that shit up. Sure. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <laughs> It's unreal. It? It's, it's what's with his, his channel? I've seen his channel go down like three separate yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, and it comes, comes back up because he's, he's, he's winning the appeals. He's appealing it probably. It's it's weird. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know why him. YouTube is granting him the appeals. So he appeals. always he his always channel. blames me too. Every fucking time he blames me, right? I'm like, get the fuck out of here, bro. This is your own dumb shit. Like your crypto shit and your fucking woman beating shit. Like you're fucking. This is like the fourth channel he's lost too. He's a fucking idiot. Hang on, let's pull up the uh, pull up the woman beater shit. Oh, here we go. You guys ready? <laughs> okay. I was just it's thinking. You haven't seen any, any, any tactics advice. We're not looking at fucking scumbags of the manistry. No, I haven't seen this. Yeah, so we're, what it's, it's like <laughs> it's 13 minutes long, so we're just gonna watch the first like 30 seconds. But uh, it actually gets worse past the opening. So I'm gonna pull it up, and uh, let's see here. All right, we got audio on this too, right? I think we got audio on this. Let me make sure. <laughs> Is he on steroids? Can you guys hear that? No, I think the audio is off. Do you have it uploaded to your StreamYard uh, videos? No, but I can get the yeah. audio on it. Uh, no, when, okay. you, when you do the when you do the share, me and Alex figured this out the other day. When you do the share, there's an option oh, yeah. to include yeah, the audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let me. I'll, it'll work. Hang on a second. I can get this. It's easier to do it as well, like MD Sam. But I can get it this way. We crack the StreamYard code. Yeah, 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 yeah. He really, man. Anthony Johnson deserves a lot of credit for bringing this out, man. The people that are calling out, you know, not everybody's going to agree on everything, but yeah. there's certain things that we agree on. And, you know, that, you know, you, the line is drawn, you know, advocating women beating and all of that. No. Okay. Yeah. We got the audio. We got the audio now. And thank you, man. I appreciate that. It's it's sick what's going on in this community. We're going to clean it you up. You got it, bro. So here we go. Here we go. You ready? I would have knocked her fucking teeth into the back of her throat. I would have fucked her up in front of everybody give me a 10-year dude give me a 10-year in prison sentence man give me a 10-year dude give me a 10-year prison sentence donovan will attempt to report this video and get hang on it gets better man this is even more fucked up shit. <laughs> it, it's it's sick dude. i'd have gave her a fucking shiner i'd have called my fucking lawyer paul pal yeah paul i just gave my fucking, uh, i just broke my fucking girl's orbital bone yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to need to get on down to the station. I would have hauled off and I would have just decked her. Jesus. I would have made damn sure that she never talked that way to me again. Hey, can you pause Let it me, real quick? Yeah, this, this shit's unreal. This guy, like, this guy has a whole bunch of like people that look up to him. That's the, that's the other big problem. Because then guys are going to fucking learn from, from those. You know, dude, those I have like, no respect for guys who are acting tough when it comes to girls. Like the, uh, the kickouts when it's just like the girls there. Like try kicking a fucking like <laughs> Jack, yeah. dude, I, I just I, this to me that shit is so lame. It's like, it's like, picking up like a, yeah, picking like on a little kid, like oh, like uh, yeah, like a little Johnny over here, like yeah, I don't know. I have like no respect for that shit. Yeah, let's bullies. get some more. Let's get some more thoughts on that though. We just saw a guy what? advocating beating women on video. What was the context there? Not that well, it was the context was as well. The context was her saying something to him. So if a woman, <laughs> no matter what she says to you, you know. Um, I would even go as far as to say if she threw a drink in somebody's face. I mean, you don't punch her to knock her for teeth. I mean, I mean, that's ridiculous. And, um, you know, it's part of being a man. You know, I mean, now, of course, if she's coming at you with a weapon, I mean, me, myself, I study martial arts so I can understand. Yeah. How to take a weapon away, how to wrestle and grapple with somebody. I mean, I met the Gracies in the 90s, so I've been practicing for a while. Oh, That's what martial arts is for, to defend yourself, you know? Yeah. Now, all of these guys threaten you. Yeah, they, oh, oh, I'll punch him in his face, all this. Suddenly now that they try, you know, suddenly now I said, okay, so this is a video of someone you're saying is me. Well, here, here's a picture of that guy in the video. And I put Hogwood next to him. I said, where, where are all these threats? Where are all these threats? Because when he came to New York, I said, I, hey, the one person I met in real life was Alpha Male Lifestyle. Armor met Wally. Uh, he created MGTOW.TV. He's a genius as far as computers and a wonderful person on top of that. And he said, hey, you know what? MD is who he says he is. He's a, he's a guy. He, he's 6'3". He goes, you know, he's about, we're about an inch difference in height. He's in good shape. And what I forgot myself is, he goes, you know what? He pulled out his veteran's ID. So he is a United States Army veteran to get us two free tickets into the Museum of Metropolitan Art on 86th Street in Manhattan. And 
you know, because they try to say, oh, he's he's not a veteran and this and felon. All that. They better hope I'm not a felon because maybe my foot will be in his ass. The problem is that Hoggle would probably like that. He'd probably fucking like that. I've never threatened anybody on YouTube or in real life. But these guys, even even horse face mindset threatened me. I said, yeah, you think what you're telling me? I wouldn't say it to your face that I know is insinuating that if I did that, you would do something physical. And I will do it to your face. There's not a problem. I'm going to speak. I will speak louder and say whatever I feel. And I still don't have a problem with him because he's one of the less confrontative ones. But I did feel that he was sent by Rolo Tomasi uh, and Richard Cooper because they're the ones that they run these guys. And, you know, and, and you know, they have to be called out. And, and I commend Anthony for calling them out. Uh, I commend other guys, you know, who call them out. Uh, people are going to do what they want to do. Um, but you know and, and i'm not going to criticize it anymore so as soon as i go uh into the next channel i'm going to make these last two documentaries about the woman beaters and the uh child predators like john hogwood and um there was a th oh yeah the other guys there's guys in the manosphere that advocate the grape you know the four snuggles and um oh, yeah, and oh. on on camera i i got the audio i got the audio so you know their picture will be behind that and this is when, because when somebody uh, criticizes the manosphere, if people don't call it out, that everybody gets lumped into that basket. Well, why That's didn't right. you say That's something? Right. Silence That's is right. consent at, at that point. Who yeah, are the guys who are advocating that? Uh, I, I don't want to say his name at the moment. He's going, you know, he's so despicable. I mean, this guy is so fucking despicable, and he's on. <laughs> it's still be ninety percent of the community. Yeah, matter. yeah, exactly. So you know, I mean, and it's it's up. Uh, matter of fact, there's a channel. Uh, he was Black Pill Studies. He calls himself Savitri Hogwood after Hogwood's mother because you know, of course, that guy's a piece of shit that doxes people's addresses, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. like his former clients. Um, and that channel has, I think, where he was, he put the, the text comments where he said rape doesn't hurt women, uh, or rape do doesn't hurt women. And um, uh, he also advocated it. You know, he did it once in the chat and Shiva and Boom Boom banned him. Funny enough, I don't speak with them either. It's so much people that these guys, like I said before, they're not men they're they're males you know it takes let maturity me, to be let a man. Me pause here because initially john anthony asked the context of this video with donovan talking about beating women and you, everyone can go watch it. it's 13 minutes long it talks about beating men too here's what i think number one these are not out of context these are some of these are pretty long he talks very openly about this stuff right i think though what he's he reminds me of like some kid in high school who talks like a sh lot of shit and has never been in a fight never done anything uh, even he's talked about being in all these fights, getting arrested. That's all nonsense. We've never found any arrest records of Donovan getting arrested for fighting or Edwin. It's all like financial identity theft, check fraud, like all this dumb shit, larceny. That was fucking stupid shit, right? Sketchy ass shit that he doesn't want people to know about, but it's all public record, right? You can look it up. So I think a lot of it is actually not, I think most or all of it's not even real. He's just like type talking like hyper tough because these beta males are so fucking dumb and they're so fucking hoodwinked a lot of the time. They're so broken. They believe this shit. And this to them is like alpha behavior, and it's not. This is pathetically <laughs> diesel behavior so crazy. from a dude who's, who's never been in a fight. Like, it's very obvious. Guys who know how to fight don't talk like this, period. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be super embarrassed if there's like a clip of me like doing that. Um, even, yeah. even if it wasn't talking about beating a girl, it was just like kind of posturing. Like, the alpha yeah. posturing is kind of. It's hard. I just never had respect for that shit. Man. It's half but, posturing about beating up women and half posturing about beating up men, like imaginary men. Like if he talks, he's like, if some dude came up to me in the street, I'd fucking beat his ass, blah, blah. But it's like, <laughs> you've obviously never been in a fight. You talk about beating up women yeah. for for what, calling you a name? Like this is fucking delusional, right? I have hundreds of videos on my channel. I don't have a single phrase in there about beating anyone's ass. Like, I don't dude, know. yeah. It's, I understand it's how happened. that's part of pickup at all. You know, they have, they have an army of trolls too. H-E-H -H in the chat, he's a troll. He's on Discord doxing people. So and he tries to come in here. Oh, MD's the next. No, we know you're a troll, H E H, -H and yeah. and uh, you know he tries to make his little funny thing. I've been calling out all of these trolls because they follow people around. They're afraid of us speaking truth. You know, they're afraid of us speaking truth. I mean, everybody's gonna have some type of difference, and that's great because it shows we're thinking for ourselves. You know, so you know you're gonna say, hey, some guys are doing this, some guys are doing that, but there's one thing we all have in common. We don't support anyone taking pictures of people's children. We don't yeah. support woman beating. We don't support forced snuggles. Uh, I mean, 
Tony Bruno. Child, child we, beating. Child beating too, man. There's so child beaters around. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You're absolutely Go ahead right. about, about Tony Bruno, though. He's watching right uh, now. He said, uh, I think it was Michael Forster on his, uh, he came on his stream and I met him. Really cool guy. Uh, yeah. He said that there was a guy, I think it was in the church, and they caught him taking pictures of a young girl. And he took the phone. They all surrounded him, I think, and they took the pictures off. And I asked him what he would do, you know, if he saw Hogwood. He goes, well, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I knew he was playing it safe on camera, you know. And he yeah. goes, that phone would be mine, you know. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you for, you know, being real yeah. about that. Just for starters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, yeah. I, saw, I, I, see, I see your point. Uh, I was watching your stream with uh, Bulldog Mindset. And again, I was saying this earlier. I like John. <laughs> I did think that you guys were pretty dickish to him. But all that aside, I, I don't understand why he didn't just say, like, yeah, taking pictures of kids is fucked up. Like, that could have ended the whole argument. Like, exactly. the, the four-hour debate that you guys had could have been ended with him just saying, yeah. yeah, of course, taking pictures of little kids is fucked up. I wouldn't do it. I don't encourage it. Blah, blah, blah. Bam. Argument over. It, it, so, exactly. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why he didn't take, like, a strong it, stance. It's that. all I was asking for. That's all I was asking for for any of them. I was like, hey, I'll just leave everything alone. Just say this. Just just excommunicate this child predator, Jonathan Hogwood. That's all you need to do. Well, and here's just, the good news. Here's the good news. Hang on. So recently, MLD was supposed to do some sort of meetup down near Alex in Miami. Uh, some hot dude con, which is like the gayest thing ever, right? Yeah, I saw a picture of that on Instagram. It was like four bald dudes in like some gay bar. But but hang on, he posted. <laughs> but he posted a picture. He posted a, a promotional thing of Rolo, who was supposed to be there, who was in Miami at the time, the fraud father. Here's what's interesting: is Rolo, the fraud father, never showed up, as far as I know, right? Why didn't he show up? Why doesn't he? If 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 MLD weirdo child stalker Peter Wood is going to brag about on Instagram or whatever the fraud father hanging out with him in Miami. And the fraud father was in Miami. Why the fuck didn't he go? Right? I, he didn't go. So I think what's happening is that number one, Rolo, the fraud father, is a narcissist, NPD clinical, like 100%, right? That's oh. my view. It's been that I'm not a doctor, but that's been my view for a long time. Those kind of people are users and abusers. They do what they use and discard. Male or female, they both do it. Use and discard, use and discard. They find the next fucking victim to be the little bitch. That's what the fraud father does. It's what he tried to do to me. He didn't understand me. And then he got his fucking ass whipped. He got exposed as huge fraud. Loser, right? Looted out. Embarrassed. He got excited when you said he got his ass whipped. I was like, who beat Rolo's ass? Oh, yeah. yeah we'll see, right? What I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not a talk. I'm not going to talk tough on YouTube about uh, that, like Donovan, some loser. But whatever happens, happens, right? Life's, uh, life's start, like, complicated like that. Anyway, my point is the fraud father, <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's at the discarding point of, the, of MLD. I think MLD has become so toxic because he stalks children and shit, like takes uh -huh. pictures of kids and shit. I think he's beginning to abandon MLD because he MLD was basically an attack dog, like his little bitch for a long time to go fucking people on YouTube and shit, right? So Rolo didn't have to. That's how uh -huh. we're a lot. He always uses a buffer, right? Whether it's MLD or Rich Cooper or someone else, he's always using a buffer mechanism. So I think he's done with MLD and I think everyone's going to abandon MLD now. I think it's just what's going to happen naturally because he's so fucking toxic. It's so obvious, you know? So I think... That's slowly happening, even though it's been ridiculously slow to happen. Yeah, his I, videos are so cringe too. I don't, I don't, I just don't understand how people like, like his video. He starts off the first three minutes of him bragging about how awesome he is. Yeah, the smartest guy ever. I'm the best. Yeah. I do think Rich Cooper did an interview with him recently, or a live stream with him. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so you know, Rich just has no morals. He's in the gutter. Uh, oh yeah, total simp. Yeah, Rich just, is obsessed with money. He's completely oh, obsessed with money. Yeah. That's how that's how Rolo plays Cooper. He just plays him for money, and that, that's how I was able to win too, though. When Rolo yeah. was trying to use Cooper to Rolo used Cooper to attack me in public. That video is still up to go. He was defaming my convention, saying it's unsafe, people are gonna get shot, all kinds of dumb shit, right? Crazy. What they did uh, to you was totally wrong, man. It was totally yeah. wrong. It's like you look at that and it's like that backstabbing uh behavior yeah. that they yeah. exhibited. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. But Cooper, but Cooper fucked Rolo because Rolo, the fraud <laughs> father, wanted Cooper to buy me out of Redman Group. And I was like, hey Rolo, that's a great idea. I'm gonna buy Cooper out. And there's emails of this I can show you guys. And Rolo's like, no, 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 no. Cooper's gonna buy you out. And I think I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna buy Cooper out. Thanks, Rolo. It's a great idea. And Rolo got really pissed off. And then Cooper, he he bit for the money because Cooper was like, Cooper, Cooper's kind of a sociopath for money, right? He's all about money, money, money. And I'm like, I have the money. How about I give you money and you go away, and then I get control of the Redman Group, which Rolo had to sign off on. It was hysterical. This is all like legit, like attorneys and shit. I'm like, this is just fucking funny. And Cooper didn't give a fuck. I think Rolo was pissed at him for a while, but it is what it is. And so you guys all owned one third of the business, and then basically uh, Rolo's plan was to uh, kind of excommunicate you, but it wound up working the other way because you bought yes. out. The, the Did Rolo not have the money to buy out Cooper? 
Uh, I don't think so. No, not at the time. Oh, I mean, maybe no. he's always broken shit. People say he's getting foreclosed on his house. I don't know, but he's a fucking retard. I mean, hundred percent. How does he go broke with, with the book? I mean, he should be have, making more than enough money from the royalties. He must be I know that he's been supporting his mother-in-law for a long time. Like she lived yeah. with him for like 10, 12 years. He bought her house in Florida, I think. Well, uh, yeah, I, I kind of sympathize with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's just, he's just his, I think his wife just runs his ass like all these fucking. Uh -huh. resorts, so I don't think his wife's a bad lady, by the way. You guys have gone after her. I've told you guys to like leave that shit alone. But Rolo is definitely a I huge beta Rolo. male. Rolo is a massive bit, gamma male beta male. No one understands this. They actually, the Rolo has zero fucking game. He's a complete fucking goofball. Socially awkward, socially retarded, to put it nicely. I've met this guy a lot in real life, and it's, it's increasingly, the more you hang out with him, the more obvious it is. This completely fucking game retard doesn't have basic social skills like he can't even he has no friends too on top of that if you read his whole blog his whole fucking blog irrational males all his books he has no male friends never ever 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 talks about having friends he doesn't fucking have any because he's a fucking weirdo yeah, that's weird like, that's, that's that's how bad it is dude it's so bad it's terrible his, his friends are his guitars <laughs> yeah and he has little figurines and shit he's a fucking weirdo <laughs> it is what it is <sighs> But yeah, yeah, anyway, so that's how I got RMG. And the purpose, too, of Rolo doing that is he wanted to create the Red Man Summit and kill off 21, which is what he keeps trying with Rule Zero Summit and all this fucking crap. It's all been a scheme for years to kill off my company because it's so good. And it's a, it's a, it's a uh, as an organization of speakers and personalities, it's a threat to his dominance uh, that he was working on for years in the Manosphere, like the secret Gamma King fucking <laughs> It's It's so bad, dude. It's, this whole community is like just so fucked up. We got to fix it, dude. We got to just drain everything. I think the problem though is for like the average person because it's like tribes, right? So there's like whatever the, the, your tribe, and then let's say there's the role of tribe, and then yeah. it's just like yeah. if you fall, objective truth doesn't matter. If you're in this tribe, you're gonna believe what this person says. It's, yeah. it's the same thing as politics. Like, you, which team are you on? There's not a lot of independence. Well, yeah. now it's become. I think it's a healthy split now though because now the community is being divided into frauds or like genuine grassroots. So there's a grassroots manosphere and guys who actually care about all these issues. And then there's frauds who just want to prey on men. And kind of like politics, it keeps getting more polarized. Which I think it's actually a really good thing. All these frauds need to go away. They need to fall apart. They need to like lose their channels, go bankrupt, get divorced from their fat, ugly old wives. That's all going to happen. I mean, do you think the sharp mama is going to be married to this old fat lady forever? No. He's using them for money. And eventually she's going to divorce his ass or whatever, break up with them, steal as much fucking money as she can. And he's going to be crying, go sell used cars again. That's how life works. I guarantee that's going to happen. I mean, see, what is it, what's going to happen? Happily ever after with this old fat lady? No fucking way. Not a fucking chance. Yeah. It, it seems like they're both either going to be sitting there doing their drugs together because she's probably like the next crackhead, you know, the stripper pole. Uh, <laughs> and you know, there's even a worse one that just betrayed us. We we put her hand out, you know, we, we hey, you can come on the show, and which was a mistake, uh, Carolina. And she tried to flaunt and show herself. So I showed a picture of her. I didn't think somebody could look worse than... Uh, Donovan Sharp's wife, uh, but Carolina does, you know, and um, of course, you know, no kids and all of that. But, you know, I'm just going to let her go and start making peace with a lot of people. If uh, Jay Tahoe comes on tonight, you know, I kind of I kind of did go a little harsh on him because, you know, I figured, OK, he was leaving comments uh, with this beef going on on Carolina's stuff. You know, I don't have a problem with speaking with uh, Bulldog if we ever speak with. I mean, the time he came on with his uh, girlfriend and she just started to, um, you know, go off, you know, and I'm saying I didn't I thought they were trolls in the chat. Poodle mindset and bulldog mindset. I, I said, that can't be the real one. Oh yeah, she called herself <laughs> poodle mindset. <laughs> like, Holy yeah, sorry. I, do like with the, I do like these uh, synonyms, uh, whatever pseudonyms you come up with sometimes. No, yeah. well, actually, we, we used to call them that, but she came on as poodle mindset. So I'm thinking it's a troll. And then she comes on camera. And she goes, oh, this stream is so boring, this and that. So I was like, hey, screw you, you know. And I threw her off. And then Bulldog came on, and she's sitting next to him. But he looked like he was like, I don't know, on a Xanax or something. And then later on, he says he was, you know, on a like some uh, Delta H uh, cannabis candy or something. But she literally was saying, look, I got his balls right here in my hand, you know, my purse. Because I go, yeah, you know, he's not saying nothing in a catatonic state. But, um... You know, I'm still not angry with them. I figure there's no sense to get angry. It's just to say, all right, look, like Anthony said, there's going to be a division. Frauds and, no, it's you know, people who support child predators and people who don't. You know, people who yeah. support women, you know, and people who don't. So, And that's where it's at. You know, everybody's going to have different things, but at least we're not there on that side of it. We're on the right side. 
Yeah. yeah it's no, pretty we, interesting how like we're all together on a stream because I would say you and I, for example, Macau, we have widely different opinions on things, but we all agree on like, you know, the idea that you should take pics of kids or be yeah. your wife or instead of arguing, <laughs> absolutely right. Instead of arguing about things that are different, yeah, we yeah. say, okay, what are the good things we agree with? Right. Because all that other shit is menial compared to it. Oh, the women, okay. the pick up all that's menial compared to taking pictures of freaking kids and the law enforcement, uh, technology specialist I spoke with and, and I have the interview. I'm just editing. I was editing it as I was going through YouTube and I saw you guys live. And that's when I was like, hey, let me just say what's up, show my support. And I saw you two guys on here. I did see Alex on uh, Face's stream. I didn't see the whole thing. Face wanted me to come on that stream. And uh, he said he saw the email too late because we spoke earlier that week. And um, I think somebody threatened him. Because they've been threatening people. They threatened Hold the Truth not to come on a stream. They threatened CBP. And they threatened a few other people that didn't come on. A few people closed their channels down. You know? Yeah. So, did Black Bill Truth did take his channel down? I love that guy's channel. Yeah. Gotcha. He, he, he kind of, yeah, he was. Uh, he walked away. And I told him, hey, you know what? Because I told him, I said, look, man, it, with, with the thing that was going on between him and Anthony, uh, John Anthony, I told him, look, you need to just let that be. I said the real enemy here, the real problem is uh modern life dating is uh yeah. John Hogwood. Roll well, no, tomorrow. it's it's all yeah, it's the frauds exactly. It's the whole fraud yeah. mafia. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, so he, just, wait, he's he stopped putting shit up because of the we we had like a minor thing. I made one video because he was trying to make all these memes about me and all this stuff. Well, I, yeah. I tried to explain like, look, let him say the black pill and all that. It is it's it's not a gang. It's not a it's not a label. It's a, you know it's it's something that is a metaphor for truth. The, what the red pill from the Matrix was. Right. So I was like, OK, I understand, you know, you got PUA hate, whatever, you know, you're, you're angry. And he's still a very cool guy. I mean, the guy's a cool guy. What we had in common. I, I mean, it's so messed up that they just the things they do to these people. I mean, I mean, they threaten them and it's because threaten they don't want. Though. I mean, he was anonymous. What could they do? Uh, well, you know what it was? Carolina docks them, man. She, 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 Carolina's a real bitch. Really? Man. Yeah. That, who's who's yeah. Carolina again? Oh, she Disgusting, yeah. kidless monster, the Brazilian bitch, man. She, yeah, she is uh, still talking shit. Still, I gotta you know, give I, credit to Tony Bruno. Tony Bruno has been warning the manosphere about that chick for a long time, man. Carolina Hermes, yeah. yeah I've never heard of credit to Tony, man, because she she was trying to separate guys, and I was like, wait a minute, I'd let you on the show, and you were on for ten streams, and I noticed guys were getting uncomfortable. I said, listen, we're gonna make this an all man stream again, and she took it well. Uh, but she still lingered around, you know, kind of like a cat that you feed that just won't go to fuck away. And I'm like, OK, you know, feed her a little comment here and there, went on her stream so she wouldn't come back on the stream. You know, did interviews with her. All of those she deleted, had my co-hosts do interviews with her. But it's a good lesson. You know, it's a good lesson to learn, <laughs> that, you know, you're a 43 year old, you know, uh, kidless. You know, I mean, it's sad. She had this dude on a stream. <laughs> And she's still talking about us. So I'm laughing about the comment up here. Hey, I'm gonna go first. Thirteen seventy-eight. Go ahead. <laughs> Three hundred to five hundred. <clears throat> wow, that's a wide range, man. Yeah, I'm about one thirty. No counted. Yeah, I've been slowing down too for a while. I want to keep it under one fifty. So Make we'll dictionary. Do you do you know your lay counter? Man, I knew there was a problem when I was forgetting girls that I had sex with, like later on. You know, because when yeah. I was a military soldier as a teenager. You know, there was a lot of a uh, lot of women, you know, women do love men in a uniform. But I saw that it was mo a little more than that because some of my other friends, you know, they didn't get the treatment. Uh, I, I was I was reading. We're only meant to like keep track of like 100 people in our minds because of the, like when we used to be in tribes and shit like that. So I wish I'd kept a, a spreadsheet or something like something like that. Not to be. Fucking yeah, weird. I know mine is I, I would say it's under 100, man. I mean, I slept with a lot of. Uh, Married women in the army, you know, you that's just normal, you know, if you're not married. And when I got out, I was 22 years old, four years served, uh, you know, in good shape. You know, I was doing 100 push ups at a shot. And I noticed girls in their 30s, you know, because this is like in the early 90s, these, these uh, 30, 35 year old, 40 hippie, really cool hippie chicks, you know, kind of like the, the, the Christy McNichol type, the, you know, Jane Fonda's and all of that. And they were just like <laughs> happy, you know, so I'm trading my youth and and, vi and vitality for their vagina. And then it's the same thing you do as you get older. We trade our finances and status for the younger, uh, the 20, 21, 22 year old hot chicks, you know, in, in certain ways, some men do, you know, so I, I would say conservatively to me, 
I'm not keeping count, but um, I would say, yeah, uh, definitely under 100, 80 maybe, or even lower. You know, it, it wasn't a big thing because I would get steady, uh, you know, pussy. But I, um, I, I was always a one woman type of guy. So I never, uh, I was never that guy that was like, okay, I got, you know, like uh, a lot of women. I did have like what I guess would be considered a rotation because I grew up in the era of, of like the, the drug era in New York City, you know, so there was freaking everybody was throwing pussy around women. It oh. was a lot easier to get women because you had. How, so are, how old are you currently? Do you mind sharing or? Uh, late 40s. Yeah. And, you know, they're, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in the fifth <laughs> element soon, you know. And, but the thing is, is as I get older, I notice the main thing is staying in shape, staying in very good shape, eating right, exercising. Um, and really, at this point, is really finances, you know, just just doing my normal stuff and um, and getting in touch with uh, with more than, you know, because I, I consider myself a, a spiritual person. I'm not religious. You know, I'm very scientific, but, you know. Uh, knowledge and all of that has always been a part of me, science and studying archaeology and stuff like that. And when I do come out, you know, I've been out, I've been on radio shows for about 10, 11 years now. Uh, people say, oh, wow, okay, he, this is him. And, you know, when I look at people saying, oh, 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 this is him, this is him, I'm saying, okay, if it is or it isn't, right, how does that compare to a guy taking pictures of children? How does it compare to a guy? Well, hang on, hang on. Before we continue, I wanted to pull this up. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with this RK selection theory. This is like in animals, first of all, but also there's theories for a while now, decades, that this applies to human beings and that our species is basically split. And this is actually one of the reasons even you see politics so heavily split in a lot of countries like America. So RK selection theory is basically the idea that uh, men and women both, and as far as I understand it, the species is we have different breeding strategies basically like some guys are like you know md says like a one woman kind of guy what does that mean well it could mean he says like he's genetically case selected like you're born this way and that you don't have any huge interest in banging a limited woman you want to find like one or two chicks or whatever and like uh breed like a whole bunch of kids out of them and animals <laughs> yeah. like no i'm serious like whales yeah. are like this wolves are like this and that's different from like I, mice <clears throat> and like rabbits which I are selected yeah, I read in various neuroscience books that monogamy is um, a certain part of our brain is wired up for monogamy, and Homo sapiens don't have it. There's like species of monkeys that are that never have more than one mate, and then they tinker with that part in their brain, and then it goes and starts mating with everyone. They this found is that more, um, this is more complex, though. This is saying that like this, our species is not uniform in that that it's different, like yeah. literally split like half and half. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that because even threats are literally just one girl type of guy. Like, and yeah. they're legit. They're not trying like. These are yeah. guys who can get laid. They're like, no, nah, man, I'm happy. Like, I want to be with one girl. But and some then, guys are not. Some guys really. Yeah, some guys are not like me, like me and yeah. John. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you know, the, the book that I'm working on before I leave the manosphere, or I, you can never escape the manosphere. But when I go into just you know a different sector, is all about that. It's about the sper the effects of sperm, the genetics, and you know, women. That it's just a proven scientific fact. Uh, if they had a lot of partners, they cannot pair bond anymore. That's it. I mean, not saying that they can't stay with a guy forever, but this is a fact. Uh, men also, there's a hormone that allows us to bond. And like Anthony said, uh, and Alex is saying, I would say it goes beyond what Alex is saying or just split. Or I would say it might be a couple of different categories. Gonna, a guy that might be monogamous. Some uh, hard nipples on the stream here. You know, a, a guy mm -hmm. might be monogamous uh, w after a few relationships. A guy might not be monogamous. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, birth yeah. control, right? It has a lot to do when women take birth control, right? And this is something I'm putting in the book. If a guy and his wife are, you know, if, if she's on birth control, right? Uh, and she, and she gets off birth control after five years and they have a kid, right? It changes because when she's on birth control, she's attracted to the way he smells while she's on that contraceptive because the contraceptive is altering her chemistry. When she's off it and she has the kid, now she's not attracted to him sexually because it has changed her physiology and, it, and, and they break up, she leaves and she get, now she's, she's got a, she's a single mother she doesn't want the father of the child. This is chemical conditioning. And the I think it was the son or grandson of Margaret Sanger, who, who had the Planned Parenthood stuff, the, 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 the straight eugenic uh, genocide. Um, he was he wrote a book. I'm citing it in my book. Uh, 
it was something about the pill. It might be called the pill, but this doctor I was talking to showed how he was saying it's destroying uh, male sperm count since the 60s. It's dropped, uh, I think it was 50 percent. You know, fifty percent. I mean, let's say it gets in the water supply and shit like yes. that. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know if that's true or not. I go fifty fifty on that stuff. I haven't looked into it too much. Yet. Well, the estrogen. Be, you see what it is? The estrogen in the water. Uh, one doctor. Um, uh, she's fr she's a Catholic from from England, I think, and she was stating that uh, the estrogen is in the water like crazy. Now, as we look, forty, fifty. Now we're sixty years later, right? In the last twenty years, I mean, I've got a pretty long. Uh, dating you know i've been dating since the late 80s and having sex so mm -hmm. i saw when i was just uh, you know basically a, a, a teenager young going into my 20s and and the sexual inflation which a lot of people say i coined the term uh i saw when it was low when the stock in vagina was very low and when uh, <laughs> communities are flooded with drugs the stock in vagina is is, is almost it's, it's it's like a dime you know it's, it's ten dollars you know um when I was in the military, guys were telling me in Korea, you're paying two to five dollars to get screwed. Um, wow. In America at that time, it was 20 bucks in Texas. In Fort Hood, Texas, it was 20 bucks, man, for a buck and a suck. And it's like, you think, okay, I got to go back to base and I got to run five miles in the morning. I got three hours. This chick, you know, wants to talk, whatever. Fuck you. I'd rather pay 20 bucks over here. And um, as that started to raise in sexual inflation, now you'll see that I understand what the insults are saying. They can't even get the fat chicks anymore. They don't even get the ugly chicks anymore. So women, yeah, women are delusional and evaluating themselves for sure. Yeah. And they have no ability to fucking, yeah, it's stupid. Hang on, I want to bitch about something that this dude's commenting. And I think you guys will find this interesting. ADJ probably banged 500, but being modest, no. Now some people accuse me of being a liar when I say 130, like, oh, you haven't banged that many chicks. And I guess the, the reality is it's like, uh, kind of your height on the internet, right? Dudes lie all the time about this, like on Tinder and shit like this. So it's like if you tell the truth, you just fuck yourself. I think lay counts kind of like that too, unless it's ridiculous, like fourteen hundred kind of shit. Yeah, one hundred thirty is about I what I'm at. Like, yeah, I hit I hit hundred in June twenty twelve, and and then I've just been steadily yeah. reporting. And it wasn't like a lot of people misunderstand. They think it was just like everything else in my yeah. life was sacrificed to increase the number. I was running big rotations all the time that I would prioritize. I was doing other shit. I didn't have a real job. You know, I was, I've been doing this coaching for. Yeah. Full time since 2013. You've been uh, focused. I was coaching before that, but I haven't had a real job since 2013. So when you can stack multiple dates in a day, and you're and you're running a highly yeah, effective yeah. system, you can knock out 100 in a year with just two closes a week. But this it wasn't all about maxing yeah. quantity. Yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's definitely a lot easier if you don't have a real job. I can vouch for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But, but just, say but this. just having good skill is a byproduct. You end up with a lot of yeah, closes. Yeah. I'll say this though. I've been going out with Xavier since like 2009 when we started hanging out way back then, and he's fucked about 200 to 250, so quite a bit more than me, about double. But the reality is, if he's a chubby chaser, he fucks he's fucked some hot girls straight up. I don't want to deny yeah, that. He's got game. He fucks some hot girls. But he fucks a lot of hot, a lot of fat girls too. I make fun. I made him a yeah. hat to so make make women fat again, is to fuck with them. <laughs> he's one uh, of he those like, uh, curve curves above everything guy. Yeah, exactly. He likes thick Latina women, and yeah. he's half Puerto Rican, so it is what it is. But if I if I was you know even going out with them, if I had the same standard, like I would fuck probably at this point two hundred or more. But I don't do that. The first girl I fucked my prom night, she was a legit eight. Then and even in hindsight, now I got, I guess you could say I got lucky, right? Or that's kind of how things played out. I got fortunate. That kind of set the bar like an eight. And I've always been super, super reluctant to go beneath an eight. Cause like in my head, I was 17. I fucked this eight. And I'm like, that's what I want to fuck eight or better, right? And I like fucking hot women. That's my goal. Fucking yep. these, these fat girls and land whales and shit. That's gross to me. I don't want to do well, that. The only thing too is like, I always like lived in places that had an abundance of hot girls. So yeah. like, like in uh, like Vegas, like Miami, San Diego, like, I was able to keep my quality high even with a high quantity just because there was such an abundance of hot chicks. But like the past year and a half been in Brazil, the past year and a half before that was in Poland. The the bell curve yeah. just shifts so much because you're removing a lot of the fat chicks. Yep. And, and chicks just have better genetics. I let so, one fat girl, mm -hmm. I've never fucked a fat girl, but I let a fat girl blow me once in 2017. Because I was always like, dude, Xavier is able to do this. Some other buddies have done this. Like, it can't be that bad. Just let her blow you, right? Like two in the morning. And it was it was gross. My brain was like freaking out, man. It's like don't don't bust. You thought your dick was a hot dog mid blow job. Yeah, it's just I don't know, man. I just couldn't. I'll never do it again. That was the one time I let it. I had to think about other tricks to bust. I was like, I can't even fucking do this. Like this is disgusting. Yeah. She wasn't even that bad. She was like a like a fat five, like not the end of the world. Uh, guys, fuck way way uglier than this. And I didn't fucking fuck her. I let her blow me, and it was like 
Never again. Never ever again. Because my you brain. Know, I wish like, I could say my first girl was an eight. My first girl was probably a four, objectively. Yeah, I, I was one of those guys that kind of just went up in quality as I got more confident. I started high. My buddy Socrates, one of our speakers in Orlando, he's you know going out with me for years too, and top layer and stuff. He knows Xavier too, and he said my bar has always been set like unnaturally high, and I think it's just because luck. Like the first girl just happened to be fucking hot. She was so hot. In high school, a lot of dudes didn't even believe me because they knew her. They're like, there's no fucking way you fucked her. I'm like, I fucked her. And then my other buddy was like, yeah, you fucked the shit out of her. So, and it was this whole fucking thing, but. I it, was there. <laughs> yeah, man. It was, it was, well, she fucking, she fucking told everybody, right? Because I couldn't bust. So I fucked her for like four hours on prom night, uh, which is the opposite problem most guys have. But some guys have this problem, it's, right? it's one, Yeah, it's one or the other. Either you bust too fast or you can't bust. Yep. I yeah, was I in the bust. bust too fast category. I was in the opposite. I but hang on, she yeah. So she went and fucking bragged though to fucking everybody, but over like the Sunday after prom. So I go to school on Monday, and everybody's like, all these chicks are I fucking the shit out of me because they think I'm like this fucking rock star now, fucking for four hours at like seventeen. So it was fucking. It was pretty funny. Then school ended, but uh, it was a whole fucking thing, dude. It was like out of a movie too because I walked into the lunchroom and like the football team. They found out they knew I was a virgin, and then not anymore. They started clapping and shit, and the whole lunchroom started clapping and shit. Also, it was it was really. Uh, at that age, it's like really embarrassing that you're like fucking beat red. You're like, oh fuck, what the fuck? But it's yeah, funny. I lasted like thirty seconds on my first time. I, I lost my virginity the uh, the end of first year of college <clears throat> to a slightly heavier chick. She's probably like a six and a half or seven. But hey, yeah. let's um, where's this other thing I want to talk? About? There's another comment I want to pull up here. Here it is. This is good. Mister Noir says, "Why are people shocked that there's infighting in this space?" So this is an important topic because we get a lot of the beta, the beta male police, the BMP. Everybody's like, oh, it's feminine, feminine energy, all this fucking bullshit that can't even back up, right? But I think the manosphere is fundamentally, or it has been unmasculine. And that's why there's so many frauds. And that's why these frauds get away with bullshit because it takes masculinity to be conflict prone and like fight and be like, no, fuck this loser and call someone out. You know what I mean? And it's all these beta male fucking gamma male weirdos that hate it because it fucks up their fraud, number one, so they don't get money. You know, it fucks up all their shit. Number two, they just... They want to keep the the feminine growth growing to like rip all these dudes off. What do you guys think about this though? Why is there the people are shocked there's infighting in this space? I think it's a it's a coping mechanism. I mean, you know what it is? These are the trolls. Like Chad Carvisel, he's another troll that's in the chat. I've been I've been documenting these guys. I mean, they have they have no life. I mean, they are Hogwarts. <laughs> A hot child army because that's what I'm going to call it now the hot child army because oh I mean, these, yeah, yeah they're straight up pathetic. And they, you know, and then you know, you, you look at that and it's like, okay, so one, they're afraid of real men. So when they see real men that can sit and have differences but yet talk like you know, cordial people, oh, that's that's the biggest fear. Oh, wh why aren't we fighting with each other? Why? Because we're men and we're mature enough to say, look, we're going to each have different outlooks. It might be political. It might be in real life. It might be uh, what you know how we feel about women. But we know that we're mature enough to say, okay, hey, you know what? Uh, we have a line that's drawn that there are the things that we do agree with, with, of course, you know, we're not going to cross that line like Hogwood and Rolo. And I want to address also with the, with the fat chick thing, you know, and you're right. When you have a higher bar and you say, okay, I want to go for AIDS. I noticed that fat chicks that get laid by good looking guys, their bar raises and yeah. they're like, they're not going to sleep with right guys. I mean, look at Rolo's wife. She's uglier than most fat chicks that I've seen. I mean, that's straight Skeletor from Masters hey, of the Universe. No comment. No comment. You guys. Yeah, I, mean, I can I can comment on uh, the last thing you said because I experienced this. So when I went to Colombia, uh, last time I was in Medellin, and you know, in Colombia you're going to be sleeping with way more girls. It just is what it is. And so after two weeks of walking around Medellin, I felt like the hot girl because I was used to having like a crazy success rate, like. Mo every night there was multiple girls on Twitter who want to hang out. Every other girl who I would approach would be a number close, and it was all pretty much all solid number closes. Like every other one of those girls would come straight to the house, so it was just like my success rate was insane. And then I just started feeling the hot girl. And I remember actively turning down sevens. Like my, I remember the guy I was with. He was like, "Yo, dude, that chick is pretty hot. Why don't you bang her?" I'm like, "She's like a seven. Versus in Miami, like if there's a seven, I'm gonna fuck her. But I, I start feeling like nah, I don't have time for location, seven. Location, man. Location and sexual inflation matters so what, much. So that's, that's, what, that's what happens to the girls. What? Well, yeah. So Look, John time. Anthony is in is in Brazil, right? Now Why there's not? more. Yeah. So the there's gotta be. More. Yeah, more hot women down there than men. You know, so it's like it, just more women than men. So then, what do you see? You see like chicks with the egg build, like Carolina. 
she's not getting nothing. You know, she could come to America and guys will simp for her. In Brazil, they don't want to look at her because they got these other chicks to look same, at. Same thing for Eastern Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eastern Europe. Well, America, Eastern Europe. It's uh, yeah. You can't yeah, get. You all can't get away with being like you know. Well, I noticed in Ukraine they're getting a little more picky because they don't want the pump and dump thing. Ukraine, and I like Ukrainian girls. They're pretty. I lived, I lived in Kiev. I would never go back. It takes two to five dates to close, and there's so much like influx of sex tourism there from like. Yeah, it's just, it's just a different culture. One thing also I was telling you, John, when you were there is there's also this like because I'm Russian and I know the Ukrainian culture really well. There's like this very strong mistrust. It goes back from the Soviet days of Americans. So yep. just because, like if you spoke Russian fluently. I think you would have a not substantially different experience, but like a noticeably different experience. But, yeah, but the women, the women have been like ruined in a sense. Like I, I was talking to a lot of the local guys. Um, since there's like so much influx of sex tourism, they all expect to be treated like you know basically like pampered and this and that. A lot of them just expect guys to give them gifts, and you know they're, they're trying to be like sugar babies and stuff like that. Just just off the bat, I had, I had chicks on dates. Be like, hey, I want to get like this and this. Can you buy it for me? They're like on first dates, or or like I meet a girl in a mall for a date. So like, I need to stop over here, and she like takes me, like a chocolate stand and orders all these expensive chocolates. She's like, "Here, pay for it." And <laughs> I've never, I've never experienced that anywhere else. Here's a and question: I, What yeah. country in the world has the most fucked up women? I think it's America. Is there anywhere worse? Uh, Canada, I mean, America, Australia. Those uh, three countries. Think about that one. Actually, that's a good question. Britain, Britain, London Britain is tough too. Yeah, London, Britain, when I was there, ugly man, straight yeah, up. I, I got two aunts that live in London, and they're, they're from London actually. And it, it's small. Like I do better when I'm there than a, a guy from England coming to New York City because New York City is just ridiculous. The sexual inflation is off the handle. Um, Russia, Alex is right. Like I have a lot of Russian friends, and I know a couple of phrases. You know, uh, I think "Spasibo" is "thank you." I don't know if you speak "Spasibo," yeah. Yeah, so when I say these little things, like I think it's uh, uh, Tipani Manu Americansky, you know, like do you speak American, you know? And they're like, how the fuck do you know these things? I'm like, well, I've dated Russian chicks, I've dated Hungarian chicks. I can say good morning and all of these little phrases. Uh, I think it's what, Dobre uh, Utra uh, or something, good morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you know, when you, when you do that, you connect with other cultures. You know, when, when you say somebody in Brazil, bon dia, or in Spanish, you know, buenos dias, and they're saying, whoa, this guy's actually, he's not your ordinary American that expects you to speak his language, even though I don't speak it fluently. And no, I, when I, I, yeah, I, I learned five languages living around the world. Like, so I speak uh, Polish, uh, some Russian, and then Polish. Spanish and Portuguese. I lived in wow. Poland, yeah. I love but, but Spanish, Spanish and Portuguese are my strongest. I'm, I'm pretty fluent. Holy shit. I knew somebody. Jean, uh, it's Jean Dabre, right? Good yeah, morning. Yeah. yeah, wow. Holy shit. Yeah. Because I've learned how to say about greetings in 20 languages, but I didn't le learn any fluently. I said, let me learn the basics, right? But yeah, for was, five languages fluently, I commend you. I was, no, not, not fluent the other ones. But in Spanish and Portuguese fluent. But there's a, there's a guy, Michel Thomas. He's a German linguist. I have a video on my channel about it. Basically, he, um, he has like a patent on this method where he just teaches you like the major 500 words. He says, if you do an analysis of the New York Times, it's like the same 500 words repeated over and over. So he just start, you just start right off speaking sentences. You can get conversational in like the top uh, 15 languages or so within about six to eight hours without any Google Translate or anything like that. That's really yeah, it's good. It's kind of common what you said though. There's definitely a lot of truth. One of the big things I teach is if you have a type, like you're into like, let's say Korean girls, you're into Spanish girls, learn a few phrases from that language. It's going to give you a huge, not a huge, but it's going to give you a noticeable uh, advantage. It's, it like builds a lot of instant comfort, basically, like right off the bat, if you can say. But I, yeah, I was to that, to that country's question, I would say, I would say Ukraine was like the biggest difference I saw from all my travels is just that it's like nearly impossible to get one night stands or to bang on the first date. It sounds crazy, but like most of them don't want to come home with you. I had a lot of situations where we'd be on the fourth date in public and they wouldn't want to kiss yet. So there, there's yeah. a lot of fucked up elements of Russian and Ukrainian culture. It's pretty much the same culture, but um, yeah. But yeah, they're, they're just like hardcore family oriented. When I lived in China, uh, everyone's like extremely passive because a lot of the dudes are just like the culture. Is, everything's very, you know, the chicks were telling me like they've never had a dude like act this confident before. Like just like a, a shell shock because they're not used to guys acting that way. Yeah, yeah, China's very, it's, uh, you know, they, the, you know, I don't want to say nothing bad about the country, but the oppression, you know, I mean, when you're looking at, you know, the communism, the stuff that, I mean, the, the males, you see it in the, in the populace of the males of how they act, you know, uh, I've had Russian friends tell me, Hey man, be careful in Russia, you know, and, um, 
I, I, you know, speaking those phrases, Alex is right. It gets me very far when they're like, wow, you know, you know how to say the basics that I think pleases Pajausta. Uh, and like, you just, you know, you say these little things and they're like, wow, but China, for some reason, I was never really attracted to that part. Uh, Homo erectus. I was, I was never either. I was never really attracted to Asian girls. Unless it's like big team I mean, Japanese yeah. girls. Same. Yeah. yeah. I remember, I remember I, I pulled, uh, I was like out in China. It was like, it was on my birthday. And I, was, I was like the only white dude in the club, like almost double everyone's height and shit like that. And people were like, <laughs> people were like dancing in synchrony to the beat, even though they didn't work for the club. And I was like, this is fucking awesome. And I, and I met this hot Chinese girl and she's with these other two Chinese girls. One was her sister and, and one was like their friend. I had no wingmen and I just pulled all three back to my hotel, just showing them like my hotel card. I was, I didn't speak Mandarin. And like the two, like the sister and the friend sat on the bed while I like railed the other girl in the, in the hotel bathroom. <laughs> You know, and shit, you know, loud and shit. I remember, but it was just like such a different dynamic. There was like no cock blocking, and um, and with and with like other girls that I would go on dates with, they they would just they were just like ultra shy, like ultra passive, and they, and they would type in the translate like Chinese girl not so open, you know, like they're just not used to being like a guy being dominant or confident or anything like that. Yeah, this um, is it's uh, yeah, a uh, homo erectus. That's another troll. I noticed he says the 14th law that I have law 14 never date a single mother. So they, I mean, it's funny how these guys will come to streams that I hop on just to troll. And well, it's hang on. I'm, I'm banning every guy you say is a troll. So I'm just saying, you, man. Gula, Thank you. Gula. I, mean, I haven't even looked at the comments yet. That shit, fucking yeah. I, well, I put on StreamYard, you know, when it starts, it has private chats, but I switch it to comments so I don't have to switch to the other window. Mm -hmm. When I do my streams, it's always a little behind. I think usually when I'm a guest, it looks like it coordinates really good. But mm -hmm. whenever I stream, it's like, you know, I'm, it's hard to toggle and then look for guests and, you know, people coming on and stuff. But, yeah, um, they, uh, they follow people. And really what I'm seeing is they're afraid of what we're doing right here. They're afraid to see guys that have different thoughts and get along fine and say, hey, you know what? It is, you know, this is cool, and we know where the line is drawn. Uh, I know the Scribe came on Tony Bruno's stream with me uh, Thursday. It was great, man. Scribe, he was on fire. I mean, he um, he actually, you know, he still has his his dating uh, stuff, and um, he does his thing, man. I commend the guy. I mean, he's he's you know like a brother to me. You know, I've always yeah. been a big proponent of uh, healthy debates. Like that's what I always try to do on my channel. I've had on many guests, and not all of them. Some of them think widely differently than me. I've never had a situation where I've had to kick a guest out or anything like that has ever happened. Mm -hmm. but you can. Yeah, have, I've, I've had people debates. jump off. Like Bulldog, as much as he says about like, yeah, we chastised him without a doubt. Strive <laughs> all yeah. and sell all that, right? So he could have left. And no, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I, I would, I would, if I was in his shoes, I would have bounced out with him. Like, yeah, he stayed for that. Yeah, the yeah. first time. The first time I ejected him because he was. I could notice he got nervous. It looked like he was reading a screen of what Rolo was telling him to say on the side, and then he 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 just kept. He started saying "shut up, shut up." So I said, "Okay, look, you say it again. I'm just going to throw you off because you've been here two hours. And you're boring us now." So we got rid of him. Then he jumped on another time. Stayed on for five hours. And that was the time he said, hey, man, they chastised me. I'm like, wait a minute, bro. You could have left. You know, you stayed on till the end of the stream, you know, and I still don't got nothing against him. Uh, he went on Nutshot stream and I got to admit, yeah, I was I was a little harsh on him because he had the balls to say, yeah, putting a guy on screen that's in a wheelchair and saying that he's got a three, that's fuck. He said, yeah, that's messed up, right? Then he renigs, right? At, oh, well, I saw this guy and I said, just when you thought this guy was a human being, you know, and I just, I blacked out. But Nutshots, you know, I think, I don't know. He says the channel was whatever. The, the yeah, video. I forgot about that stream where they, they brought a guy in a wheelchair on with like, oh. he couldn't even, he couldn't even, he was a paraplegic basically. And that he had, yeah. he had, a, he had a rotation of three hot women. It was like, yeah. this is and, sick. So and, and Hogwood, the first thing he said, oh, Josh is out earning everybody, right? They showed a news clip of Josh where he's on the news saying, look, I, I, he's trying to get the state to fund his bed lift. I was yeah. going to start a GoFundMe for that guy, but I couldn't find a way to contact him. And yeah. these guys, what do they do? You know, Hogwood probably gave him a blowjob and got him to say that shit on camera. <laughs> and it's just, you know, I think about this. That's another thing I called out when I showed uh, pictures of Myron Gaines in a bed with two different men uh, following transvestites. And hey, nothing against people that want to follow transvestites. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. But don't lie to me and tell me you're straight.
You know what I mean? Don't, don't lie to me. This is what you are. Um, I hope, I mean, see, on the stream that we do, like tonight, Saturday nights, it's it's always crazy because um, I let anybody come on, which it's a double-edged sword. You can get cool people that hop on, and you, I mean, you look at the, some of the old streams, people come on, they flash all of this stuff. I get them off in three seconds, so, you know, and I just, okay, you know. But people, um, dude, people send me that shit. They're like, "Hey, you need to, you need to expose MGTOW dictionary because they, they have people flashing on the stream, and they're sending me like the screenshots with guys' dicks." It's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? It's, it's yeah, I remember, I remember in this one, uh, Afi Kingdom had that problem. He had his ch channel taken down temporarily because he had some random dude shows. I don't ever said this. Why would you ever like? It, it's a bunch of dudes. It's not like it's it's like you're on a you know, whatever thing with chicks and you're showing your dick to chicks which okay that is weird in of itself but at least that's understandable you're showing your dick to 99 percent dudes like i don't understand it's, it at all. it's, it's like, like shock like, like, shock value like oh look they're cool or important now because like, <laughs> it's just there's it's just the manosphere your parents have failed you if you think it's cool to show your dick you know what it is they can't it's get nobody bad. else to look at their dick they, they nobody's gonna look at it so they say hey you know what this is the only way now, i didn't know affy uh I used to call him Affy the Clown because he came on with LFA when we were cool. And I was like one of the first guys I roasted him. And I think it was Red Pill Rebellion because uh, he recommended that you sleep. You could sleep with a girl with AIDS without a condom and and you'd have a one percent chance. I said, you're out of your freaking mind. I blacked out, went off. And now he runs around trolling, you know, Red Pill Rebellion, anything he can say. So all of these guys are documented. But Affy, I'm not mad at Affy, uh, but I think he was hurt because because uh, he came on camera and I said, man, you kind of look like Grover from Sesame Street. And then he took the camera off and he put an avatar on and then he changed the avatar. And, it, you know, I, I could still make peace with it. I'm not mad at him. But then he and Lucario made a video and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't even know this guy. And he started saying so. so I said, OK, I said, you know, it goes both ways. I'm happy when people roast. It's like, hey, great. You know, do what you're going to do. When I roast, don't say nothing. You know, and I'm at the point now where I'm just going to let it just I'm just going to let it ease off. Once I get the sperm book out to teach younger generations how important it is to be careful, you know, and, you know, definitely be careful of STDs uh, and then go from there, you know, and say, OK, I'm transitioning onto a newer channel and leave a documentary probably for the last thing that I do and just say, hey, have a great time. I might come back, you know, once a month, if that. But hopefully I'll be able to just, you know, stay away from it. Yeah, your channel's, uh, you know, got, you got big men, four or 5,000 subs, legendary men, legendary work, dude, taking down the frauds, man. Someone's got to crack some skulls, bro. <laughs> Thanks, bro. You too, bro. I mean, you, you're, man, I want to see your channel grow. I mean, yeah, I, I definitely, I've said it before on the stream. I said, look, if I had to choose between the two, I'd like to see Anthony win against Rolo and those guys. Thanks. I mean, he crush all of them. And I mean, we will. No I mean, it's already, we're fucking killing it right now, man. We got 317,000 subs on my main channel. Again, we've gained over 22,000 subs, 23,000 in the past 30 days. We're on fire. That was awesome. And I think we're going to hit 400,000 by October, November. So with 400K this mm -hmm. year, too. Yeah, Keep they've going, committed going, high going, treason. Going. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, they, yeah. they committed high treason against Anthony. I mean, I looked at that and I was like, what oh, yeah. the? I mean, Rolo is just... of doing the right thing in the world. If you do the right thing and you're you're really committed to what you do and you love it, people want to take you down. The higher you climb, the more they want to take you down, like uh, crabs in a bucket kind of shit. Yeah, exactly. That's can good. you can you pop the comment up about uh, Alex his interview with Face and LMS? Because I, I didn't get a chance to see it. I'm just curious what what people saw. This thoughts one or no, no, yeah, right there. The, this one, yeah. This one, yeah. Well, what's uh, what's like the high level summary, Alex, of the major points or whatever? Um, I mean. Face and LMS basically believes that uh, in look determinism, so whatever, let's say you're a fault for, that's like as far as you're going to climb, like that's it, you're determined to that, and that the black pill is based on science and research, and that, yeah, you know, it is what it is, and that, you know, the pickup community uh, heavily overblows, you know, how much game matters, and just basically all that. Uh, I didn't necessarily disagree with everything he said. <clears throat> I also agree that looks are very important and that, for example, a much better looking guy is going to have a way easier time than a worse looking guy. I just disagree with one. Some of the studies they cited are very unscientific. So I debunked some of those. And two, I disagree with the extent to which they matters. And yeah, you, you were right when yeah. you said they hate those what about ism examples. They say, well, I've never heard of a guy who's like a four banging sixes or sevens. So I'm like, okay, well, there's my roommate. 
Like he's a four, he's Indian. Uh, you know, he has an accent, he's bald, like he fits all the criteria. He's not, but he's not deformed. I, I, I agree. Like if you're deformed, like, yeah, you're kind of fucked. And he's, in, and he's in the triple digits. He's in the triple digits. Yeah. And he's, he's hit, he's doing what, like 60 girls a year or something like that. 70 yeah, that's, fun, that's funny. Uh, yeah. And he's, and I have, he, dude, I have, he I have lost his three years ago. He was, Since he was I've a been, from India. Yeah. Since I've been coaching for over 10 years, I just have thousands of counter examples. So to me, there's no debate. To me, it's not my opinion versus their opinion. To me, I have tons of examples, but I'm not a guy that says looks don't matter. It's not, it's far from that. The yeah. fact of the matter is, is that like, like just to, to break it down, like super, super simple, right? If you give me any guy, regardless of his looks, right? Unless he's, you know, really, 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 really ugly, right? I'm going to get him pro pictures. I'm going to have the, a team of girls pick the top five pro pictures. We're going to max out the aesthetics on those top five with FaceApp and Photoshop. And then I'm going to write his bio for him. Then he plugs into my online sequences. Now he has a bunch of phone numbers. No way around it, no matter who he is, no matter how bad his game is. Then he plugs into my text sequences. Now he has a bunch of girls coming straight to the house, right? So literally, I just have to show him how to how to close once the girl's at his house, which isn't that hard. And now he's, he's closing regularly. And then I show him how to add in more lead flow from cold approach. And I show him how to handle the public dates when he has the dates in public. And ta-da, he has a, a regular stream of girls for life. And then he can upgrade his confidence and coolness and work on his s and and upgrade his quality. And I show him how to retain the girls. And that's it. But it goes from getting pro pictures to having girls coming to your house because I define all the texting and online game sequences. So where does Black Pill fit into that? And, well, and you the, the, the Black Pill, like I noticed the comment Alex was saying, if Black Pill was true. The Black Pill is a metaphor for truth. So if the truth is that, okay, like you said, if a guy is like, physically deformed he's screwed uh he always has hookers you know like uh Yo master yoda that comes on uh 30 years he's been screwing hookers i think he's like 50. um he's one deformed. thing you guys said that i appreciate is looks do matter you know looks do matter yeah. and things are going to work better for one guy than another mm -hmm. guy looks actually gives your personality a chance but when you think about that is it really your personality or is it your looks? Now, this can't be determined in one, 10, 100 streams. I mean, this is very, very complex. And I think that there's going to be a real separation between guys that say, okay, no, looks do matter to an extent. I appreciate Alex's uh, honesty with that, you know, and John Anthony's, because I heard him say it when I was making my coffee that, yeah, it's going to work better for guys well, with looks. That's, that's, that's a truism as well. I mean, what, what would Tinder be, you know, if, if, all, if everyone was on equal playing field? Like RSD preached for years and years, everyone's cut from the same cloth, looks don't matter whatsoever. And they used to close threads and emphatically make the point. I even bought into this at one point, like 10 years ago. They would like close, someone would say, hey, how much do looks matter? They'd close the thread on the forum and say, this has been answered a million times. They matter zero. Why they, just they, closed. they were very controlling like that. They closed a lot of threads, other shit too. I forgot about that. They're weird. Who else did that? Or who RSD. RSD that? specifically, yeah. they did that. Oh, they yeah. they did a real disservice to the community by making the argument that looks don't matter at all. If they had just said, yeah, looks, of course, well, he, looks matter. He, he had to. He, he had to. For, for their sales. Too. Best for, their, for their marketing yeah. to, to well, everyone well, in the playing field. Well, he had to do that. Owen Cook had to do that because he looks like Gimli from Lord of the Rings. I mean, he's just missing a hammer, you know. Yeah. And 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 if you look at his audience, right, they're all basically incels, you know. And and he plays of it. Okay, look, if a trollish-looking mm -hmm. guy from Mordor like him can can get a chick, which is all staged, then hey, pay me the three hundred dollars. And when I looked at the seminar, I said, wow, he just pulled in about nine grand from this. So the money talks at that point. And what do they have to do? suppress the truth you can't make money off of the truth you know it's very hard to make money off of the truth so mm -hmm. how do you make money off the truth somebody pays you to bury it you know uh face face never really goes on anybody's stream he went on rollo stream one time they chastised him he came on mine twice as as just to come on as a cool guy i was like wow this is great face is yeah. face lms that guy yeah face and lms yeah uh we spoke on email you know a few times he he even advertised the app that i had back in 2019 in November, excellent in Water Tracks Woman 5. I was on a stream in December of 2019 with him and uh, Coach Blackpill at the time, CBP now. Um, and, you know, they the points, the truth will change. The The level of, of the water at high tide is the truth. That is the level. At low tide, that truth of the level at high tide changes to the level at low tide. I, now, the guys... Like yeah. you guys are saying, okay, yeah, okay, looks do matter. The reason you see these other guys, Rolo can't say looks matter because look at him. 
I mean, brutal. Look, roll straight out the crypt. They dig him up and put him <laughs> on the chair for live streams. So he he can't butt plug fitness from fresh and fresh and fit him and the little frog, the ostrich and the frog. They can't say that because one guy, that's a great picture. One, one guy, you know, he's got the beak. Alex got serious beak, straight emu, you know. And frog, you look at him, you're like, frog's just a little, you know, we caught frog, and this is something too. If guys would just admit it to a point. Uh, I got to look for the picture. I might still have it where he's wearing uh, lifts and the sneakers. So why would a guy do that? It's basically because height does have a bearing, you know, uh, looks do have a bearing. So this is why, okay, a person will, will, um, will comb their hair in a certain way. But, but then again, hair again, you know, that that's a big factor there, you know? So, um, Again, there are things that mitigate this. And as long as people are being honest to say, okay, this guy here with the glasses and the balding and all of that, is it? this is a special case. And I've said it all along. Sometimes men need men to basically walk them through. Like I know guys have told me, hey, man, women will not talk to me. But when I'm hanging out with you, women come around and you're not the type of guy that's like hungry for them and you let things happen. But I've noticed how they will ignore certain guys that, you know, they try to say something when they say something to them. It's like they ignore it. When I say something, they actually think about what I said. So I'm saying, hmm. And I didn't know this in the 90s. All I knew is when I got older and I looked back at it, I said, this is why this chips chick slept with me because I wasn't a nice guy. And that might also be part of it. But if a guy is a 5'2", like they say, what's the stereotype? The 5'2", balding Indian janitor. He, If he's not nice to a girl, that that plain not Mr. Nice Guy ain't going to get him nothing. You know, they don't want to talk. That, they're like, thank you. Stay away. The, the only way for him to really get anything, one, is status. Look at Billy Joel, 5'3", five, 5'4", five, sings, all of that. He got the supermodel Christy Brinkley, but it wasn't based on attraction. I put that in my book, The uh, the Black Pill, because I just Andy, really- uh, sorry to cut you off, man, but I got to get I got to bounce in a minute here. We got to close up the show. Cool. Uh, a little bit short today, a little over an hour and uh, 30, but I appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, everybody watching, you know, happy 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. Fuck yeah. America. Uh, Alex, they can find your channel on YouTube by searching yeah. Alex PWF. Alex We're playing with fire. fire. We'll come up. Playing with fire. We're finally ranking high. Oh, oh, you'll find the, oh, playing with fire. We're going to come up for that movie. Oh, you'll, yeah, the John Cena movie. Yeah. Got it. John, they can find you by searching Coach John Anthony on YouTube, right? Yeah, John Anthony Lifestyle. And then uh, PlatinumDatingSystem.com is my, my course. 48 Laws of Dating, I actually search MGTOW Dictionary, right, on YouTube. Pull right up. Yeah, yeah, My they channel. all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, got the book, you got the book on Amazon, 48 Laws of Dating, right? Yeah, 48 Laws of Dating and The Black Pill, so two different books. Okay. Mm -hmm. Boys, thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. Everybody tune in. Again, guys. happy 4th. Fuck yeah. We'll talk Thank again you. soon. All right, guys. Later. Peace out. This has been right. episode 145 of the Red Man Group. See you guys probably next Saturday. Peace.